So you might be wondering, does your patient have an Achilles tendon rupture? In this video, we're gonna dive into all the key things that you need to know to make sure you can diagnose these accurately in practice. So if you're ready, let's dive in. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So Achilles tendon ruptures are incredibly important conditions to diagnose because if we delay diagnosis, it can have a massive effect on the patient's prognosis. We also know that 20% of Achilles tendon ruptures are missed. So getting this right is absolutely crucial. So make sure you sit back, Relax and let's get started. So first of all, causes. How do these injuries occur in practice? Well, ultimately we're looking at points where the calf muscle is trying to work with the foot in a real end range dorsiflex position. This means that there's so much stretch going through the Achilles tendon that unfortunately it can't cope with it and it ruptures. So we might see examples like a person sprinting and their Achilles tears when they're trying to push off that foot in a real end range dorsiflex position. As you can see here, this might include basketball players who are trying to drive towards the net, trying to push off that foot, but once again in that end range dorsiflex position. But also these injuries can occur when the foot is in a plantar flex position and then suddenly gets forced into dorsiflexion. As you can imagine, that's gonna really elongate that Achilles tendon and cause it to rupture. An example I can think of from a patient in the past was when they were walking up the steps, their foot slipped on the step and suddenly they got forced into that dorsiflexion position. Unfortunately, they ruptured their tendon. But it's also really important to consider who gets an Achilles tendon rupture. Well, we find that the most common demographic is the middle-aged individual between 30 to 50 years old. It's also more common in males than females, but the particular relevant point is unconditioned individuals, i.e. someone who hasn't done any sport for a long period of time and then suddenly goes back into activity where that tendon isn't ready to do the work. A really common story that I've heard in my practice is individuals who haven't played sport for a long time and then they get invited to go back and play a football match with their friends. What happens? They start sprinting and that's when their tendon, who isn't really used to coping with that load, gets injured. And in fact, Aula et al. from 2019 highlight the Achilles tendon is the most commonly injured tendon in the body. So it just goes to show it does happen commonly. So next, subjective clues. What might an individual say that might lead us to this suspicion? Well, the NICE guidelines direct us really brilliantly here. So first of all, we might consider a sudden onset. Your patient will describe a particular trauma, a mechanism of injury, something suddenly happened that led to their Achilles being ruptured. They will commonly report a sharp pain. In fact, they'll describe as if they were kicked in the back of the leg or shot in the back of the leg where they had this searing pain in their Achilles right at that particular moment. And of course, this may well have been supported by an audible pop that the patient suddenly heard as their Achilles snapped. So certainly listen out for those things in your subjective history. So next, objective signs. What clues can we gain in our objective assessment to diagnose these ruptures? Well, first of all, we might look for swelling and bruising on the Achilles that's been injured in comparison to the other side. We may also be able to palpate down the Achilles tendon itself, looking for a palpable gap in the tendon. But remember, this doesn't always present with all patients. Now, a really interesting point is about the patient's function and abilities with walking and plantar flexing. Of course, in the majority of cases, your patient won't be able to do those things. They'll be using crutches. They'll hardly be able to use their foot. Sure, this might indicate an Achilles tendon rupture more clearly. But remember what we said at the top of the video, approximately 20% of these Achilles tendon ruptures are missed by clinicians. Why are they missed? Well, commonly it's because your patient might be able to use other muscles or other compensatory methods in order to walk, in order to push their foot down to the floor. So just bear that in mind when your patient is in front of you. And finally, special tests. What are the real giveaways for us in diagnosing this condition? Well, there are four key things for me. The first is passive dorsiflexion. You may find that because there's no integrity to the Achilles tendon, you can passively dorsiflex the foot that's been injured a lot more compared to the other side, particularly with no firm end feel because that Achilles tendon is not holding the dorsiflexion. You may also find that your patient has reduced resisted plantar flexion. You can either test this with an isometric or you'll find that the patient is unable to perform a single leg heel raise compared to the other side. 
And finally, there's two special tests that are really worthwhile as a part of that four-part cluster. The first is the Thompson or squeeze test. This is where we lie our patient in prone with their ankles over the edge of the bed. We squeeze the calf of both legs and we might find that when we squeeze the affected side, the foot does not move into a plantar flex position. That's because the Achilles tendon is ruptured and can't carry the movement forward. We can also use Matel's test. This is where we also lie our patient in prone, we flex their knees to 90 degrees, and in that position we observe the level of the foot in terms of plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. You should find that the unaffected leg can stay in neutral, but the affected leg will move into dorsiflexion because that Achilles tendon is not able to hold on. So guys, I really hope this video has helped clarify the key diagnosis point for an Achilles tendon rupture. If it has, if you've enjoyed it, please support us by smashing that like button and of course subscribe to the channel for all our best updates. Remember, you can also follow us on Instagram at Clinical Physio and on our website clinicalphysio.com for more brilliant resources for physiotherapists. I'm Khalid, thank you so much for watching, see you soon here on Clinical Physio.